motional EMF. So we have a single goal today. We're going to talk about motional EMF. What is it? It's a voltage generated across the length of a conductor that is moving through a magnetic field. Okay, so we just said that part. Now, if we have a metal rod, it has a length L, moves a velocity V through a magnetic field B, the motional EMF is given by minus VLB. That equation is true as long as those three things, velocity, field, and length, are mutually perpendicular. Okay, so we'll look at uh, a picture of that in a second. And the minus sign, of course, is again associated with Lenz's law. It's about the nature of objects to uh, oppose the change in magnetic flux. Okay, so here's a rod moving to the right through a field, and the field is into the page. So the rod is the red thing, the blue vector is the velocity, so here we see the velocity directed to the right, the length of the rod is up and down, and the magnetic field is into the page. So if you imagine that there are positive and negative charges moving with that piece of metal, then you can do the right hand rule on uh, the charges that are, that are moving along with the rod. And what you should find is that uh, positive charges deflect up toward the top and negative charges would deflect in the opposite direction. They would go down. Okay, so I'm going to do my right hand rule. I hold my right hand with my fingers in the direction of the velocity. My palm points in the direction of the magnetic field. And my thumb points up and that is the direction of the force on positive charges. So what would happen as you move this object through the field is you would get a polarization. The top part of the rod would be positive, the bottom part would be negative. It would basically act like a battery that's connected like this. Uh, that would, those charges would keep deflecting until you get so much electric field built up that the electric force and the magnetic force cancel out, and then there's no further deflection. Okay, so if you stick this device in a circuit, then it acts like a battery. It forces a current to flow around the circuit. So the rod sitting there on these metal rails and the green thing on the left is, uh, you can think of it as a light bulb or some kind of resistor. You've got a circuit there consisting of the red rod, the blue rails, and the green thing with the wires attached to it. There's a complete loop there, it's a complete circuit. So if you just have that uh, conducting rod just sitting there at rest, nothing happens. But if you start moving it, then things can happen. So what we're going to do here is allow the rod to move to the right and we're going to think about what the direction is of the induced current in this loop as the rod goes to the right. Okay, so maybe you want to pause it here and just take a minute and think about that. And you could actually draw your three pictures before, after, and two opposed pictures to get the answer. It's more than one way to do it. Okay, so I'm going to do the pictorial method. So I'm just going to let basically the animation do it for me. So there's my before picture. And then the rod has gone further off to the right. So our loop is a lot bigger and way more field lines going through there than before. So the before picture, the after picture is the one on the right. And so to oppose the change, uh, the change has been adding field lines into the page. To oppose that change, the loop wants to add its own field lines out of the page. So if I point my thumb on my right hand out of the page the way the uh, induced field is, then my fingers curl counterclockwise. So the counterclockwise current around the loop generates this opposing field to oppose the change in flux. And what that current will actually do is act to, uh, to slow the, the bar down, in fact. Okay, another way to think about it is, as we talked about, you can think of that rod as a battery with its positive terminal toward the top and the negative terminal at the bottom. And if you think of it like that, you also will generate a counterclockwise current. So lots of ways to think about that. Okay, so that is our brief introduction to motional EMF. The end.